When the school bell sounds at the end of the day, millions of children are left alone until their parents get home. Evidence suggests that children who are unsupervised during the after school hours are more likely to use drugs, receive poor grades, and even drop out of school. And FBI data shows that crimes among youth peak between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly. And joining me is Maisha Leek, the National Vice President of Government Relations at the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I so those after school hours are, are really, I know, very crucial hours. That translates in, into what in terms of the effect on society and really what young people are getting into because everything is on demand. Everything is right at their fingertips. Absolutely. Uh, it's sort of a dead space if you don't have quality quality after school programming in that all sorts of options, positive and negative, are available to young people without the benefit of a mentor or the benefit of programming that sort of helps them get onto great futures. And what's critical for us at Boys and Girls Club is really filling that gap, right? Making sure that the after school hours aren't sort of this nebulous space where negative activity, um, you're, you spoke about crime. Um, as sort of that being the high crime period in a lot of cities and rural areas. We sort of intervene, um, provide after school help, character development programming for teens across the country uh, in our 4,200 uh, clubs on military installations, native lands, um, in every community. Is there a difference, boys and then girls, in terms of the types of trouble that they get to in, into and perhaps the frequency? You know, there are some studies that talk about that. I think there's a lot of interest in determining what the differences are so that we can cater programming according to the gender-specific needs of young people. But overall, the, the stats are, are sort of what they are. When young people don't have a positive mentor or caring adult in their life, particularly in the after-school hours, um, it generally doesn't benefit not only them, but their communities that care about them a great deal. And in terms of what you've seen, the changes, maybe someone that's come to one of your programs or what you've seen statistically in your own studies within the Boys and Girls Clubs, what are the changes that can happen and what helps young people stay on the right track? Sure, that's a great question. We've spent a lot of time not just sort of speculating and telling our own stories, but studying our data um, about what is happening through our programming. And what we found uh, is that young people that come to clubs once a week throughout the year are more inclined to graduate from high school. Um, we find that they are more inclined to serve in their communities. They're more inclined to have explored college or career or, or a military career as their next step. They all have plans for when they graduate from high school. Um, so our data and our personal stories are showing us that the more we make sure that a caring adult, particularly in a club, uh, is available to a young person, the more they are going to be sort of prepared to start the great futures that we know they all deserve um, with the proper coaching. Now, if we take it a young look at a young person 30 years ago and then today, so different in yeah. terms of their needs, um, uh, their expectations, and, and just how they are in this society. What, what have you been doing in order to keep up with, with what they want as young people when they come to you to just keep them entertained and happy and, and fulfilled during those hours? I'm glad you asked. We've spent a lot of time um, using 30 years as a benchmark um, for the past 45 years specifying programming for young people. We have a great Keystone program. We just came off of a conference where we had 2,200 teens in Dallas um, sort of mentoring each other, going on uh, career visits, uh, getting certifications. We find that a lot of our young people are really focused on what will happen after high school, be that a job or, or college. Um, we're building out programming to get at young people online and keeping them safe. Uh, we're working with our partners to get folks to, to get our young people to not only use social media as a tool to learn about what's happening with their favorite celebrity, um, but to get a sense of what the options are out to them so that this on-demand world um, is safer and more in tune to what their aspirations are uh, for their great futures. Absolutely, and in terms of inner city life versus you know somebody in rural life or suburban life, how do you manage 
dealing with those types of demographics and making sure that they have something that is worthwhile and that they want to come to you for? Sure. So the benefit of Boys and Girls Club um, is our model in that each club sort of is locally organized. Um, folks from the community run it. Board members from the community oversee the club. And so a club in a rural community and a club in a major city are going to be different because local people are running local clubs and can connect with their youth in their unique ways. What we find is that, um, in some respects, teens are teens. They all sort of have some similar pressures, needs, and interests. But the value of clubs is because we are sort of locally controlled is that each community, um, with guidance on the programs that we provide nationally, but each community can sort of set the deck about what it means to have a quality club experience um, locally. Wow, a lot you are doing in order to kind of combat those statistics. I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Good to see you. Thank you. Maisha Leek, thank you so much, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.